Is Fallout 76 worth it in 2021? Now, as a Fallout content creator, you may think that my answer is pretty clear cut, but believe me guys, it's far from it. When the game first released, it was just about bearable. It has had a ton of improvements, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at what's better, what still needs to be improved, and is it worth you buying it in 2021? Let's jump straight into it. So, how does Fallout 76 stack up in 2021? We'll start off with interactions with players and the environment. My main gripe with Fallout 76 when it first came out was how empty the map felt. Now, I don't mean this in terms of actual places you can visit, I mean that in terms of NPCs and player interaction. Bethesda's initial idea was to have the role of human NPCs replaced by players. But as you can see, the map is pretty damn large. So it was quite difficult to find a decent number of players congregated in one location. Fallout 76 isn't like RuneScape, for example, which is still a fantastic game 20 years later. There's no central areas where everybody gravitates to, and I think that is something that needs to be addressed. In terms of player interaction, it still feels quite empty to me. If you play with a group of friends, then the world doesn't feel as empty player-wise, but if you're just a solo player, then it can be quite difficult to actually find other players to chill out with or to actually game with. It is an issue which still plagues the game, in my opinion. They have made improvements to this by adding a team system, so now you can join up with teams in the wasteland. But again, it's just a couple of people. It doesn't feel like a community, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I don't know, it's just my feelings on the matter. Personally, I think we need some form of trading hub where everybody can congregate and buy and sell weapons, armor, etc, etc. And I also feel that it needs some form of settlement based system. What I mean by that is you and a group of people can build up a settlement, ally yourself with different groups in the wasteland, the raiders, the brotherhood, the enclave for example, form alliances with other settlements, or even go to war with other settlements. I think that would improve the game's player interaction tenfold. Seriously guys, that is something they need to implement. NPCs on the other hand have been improved dramatically. When the game was first released, the only NPCs you had really were robots. You'd get quests off them and every single bit of vocal interaction you had with an NPC would be with a robot. Now they have added human NPCs and these guys do everything from giving you quests, being part of the quest story and generally making the Fallout world feel a little bit more lived in. You can find them travelling around the wasteland. You can find them at settlements such as the Crater, Foundation and the Atlas Observatory. And you can even have NPCs in your camp now in the form of allies. So you've got a space woman that complains about headaches all the time. She is really annoying. There's a woman who plays a guitar, which is pretty cool. There's a chef. There's a doctor. There's loads of different allies that you can get in your camp now. And they all have their own missions as well. So it just gives you a little bit more to do in the game. All in all guys, if you're looking at buying Fallout 76 and you're seeing reviews from 2018 which are saying there's no NPCs, it's very boring, the world feels empty, it has improved drastically. Please don't listen to reviews from that time, it is a totally different game now. Let's take a look at the story itself, discuss some of the missions and have a ganders at the daily activities that can keep you busy in Fallout 76. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the story of Fallout 76 because if you're looking at buying the game, I don't want to ruin it for you. But again, this is something that has been improved upon and added to. On release, there was one main storyline and that was all focused on you following the Overseer's journey and stopping a plague. That's all I'm going to say. With the release of Wastelanders, Another storyline came out which is based upon gold, that's a pretty interesting story and you get to meet a lot of NPCs in that. And of course they have released the new one, Steel Dawn. That storyline is not completed yet but they are going to be added to it so there's plenty more content coming along. Other than the main stories there is quite a lot of side quests and daily activities. 
You have the new seasons, which come around quite often. I think we're on season three at the moment. And with the seasons, you do a number of challenges to unlock certain rewards on a scoreboard. Pretty similar to a number of other games that are out at the moment. There's also things called daily ops, where again, it's daily missions that you can do and you unlock rewards for them. There's also events which pop up all over the map which involve totally different things. Some are really, really random, some are quite mundane and boring, but it does keep you occupied. There's certain seasonal events such as Fashion Act and Meat Week and they can be really fun. That does attract a lot of players, so you are usually playing in a big group. And there's daily missions you can do for the factions, the settlers and the raiders. This rewards you with gold bullion, which you can spend unlocking rewards. So once the main story is done, there is still quite a lot of things to sink your teeth into. It's not just a linear, you do the main story and then that's it, there's nothing for you to do. Yes, it can get a little bit repetitive, but the good thing is, there is always the option to go out and do some more missions, do some more quests and actually have a goal at the end of it, whether that be unlocking a certain plan or unlocking a certain amount of bullion. You always have a goal to achieve, which was something the game lacked massively when it first came out. Trust me on that guys, you'd find yourself just wandering around aimlessly doing absolutely nothing. Leveling up in Fallout 76, it's not the same as a lot of online games. You do have a normal level counter, so level 1, level 2, level 3, etc, etc, but there is also perk cards included in the leveling system. Let me explain it to you. Now, perk cards give you certain abilities in certain fields, so for example, if you want to be a rifleman, you get the rifleman perk card, and then you can level up that perk card to a maximum of 3 levels. On top of that, each perk card is sorted into a separate category, so strength, agility, luck, etc, etc. The amount of points that you have in each category dictates how many cards you can have in that category, if that makes sense at all. So, for example, if you wanted to be a rifleman, and you wanted to max out every single perk card in the rifleman category, which would add up to 9, you would need to have at least 9 points in the perception category because that's what the perk cards for riflemen come under. Quite simple really. They've also just brought out legendary perks. Now legendary perks can be obtained by deleting unwanted perk cards such as, I don't know, say if you're a rifleman and then you unlock a gladiator which is a melee type card. You scrap that card, you get points for it and then you can use that to unlock legendary perks. The legendary perks are pretty damn cool. You can get things such as Ammo Factory, which gives you more ammo when you're crafting bullets. You can get things like Follow Through, which isn't shitting yourself. I can't remember correctly, but I think it does more damage when you sneak attack somebody. I need to have a look into that, but you get the idea. The legendary perks can give you a little bit more of an advantage. Now, there is other factors that play into the effectiveness of a build. I see a lot of people just putting perk points and perk cards into loads of different categories. That doesn't work. You need to focus on one build and one build only, and that is when you will get the most out of it. Now, they are talking about bringing out perk loadouts, which means you can have loads of different setups which you can alternate between. Say if you wanted to have a melee build, you could have one and then you could swap it out to a rifle build or you could swap it out to a commando build. This is just another example of how Bethesda keep on improving the game. There's also other factors that play into your build and its effectiveness in Fallout 76. There's tons of different variants on certain weapons. So for example, you have bloody builds which rely on low health but high damage output. There's loads of different armors and mutations that can contribute to having an effective body build. And this just goes to show how much time and effort you really do need to put in when deciding what kind of build you're going to run. It really is quite an intricate system to be fair and it can give you something to work towards. So let's talk about the camp building system. This is probably one of the better aspects of Fallout 76 and it's always been pretty decent in my opinion. The difference between this and having settlements in Fallout 4 for example is you can literally place your camp 
anywhere other than in select locations like in towns and whatnot it doesn't let you place camps there but you can place it pretty much anywhere in the wilderness you can place them in pre-existing structures in certain situations and it just gives you a lot of ability to do some really interesting builds some of the stuff people are producing today is absolutely phenomenal it's got to a point now where it's pretty much an art form and i'm not over exaggerating there is some ridiculous stuff out there at the moment the atomic shop does help in this department for buying camp items that is probably the primary purpose for the atomic shop in my opinion you can't actually pay to win in fallout 76 which is good so you can't go into the atomic shop and buy a seriously overpowered weapon but you can go into the atomic shop and buy some really nice items for your camp that makes them stand out compared to all the others you see in the wasteland but there is an element of skill when it comes down to building camps you can't just throw down a fantastic modern looking house without knowing the intricacies of the build system there is still issues with the camp building system let's not you know have any illusions about that it's pretty much the only game that i know where you have to destroy the camp building system to get a decent camp built honestly there is some really really strange things with it but bethesda are continuing to improve on the situation there's been a lot of bug fixes and all in all it's been positive seriously if building is your kind of thing fallout 76 is probably the game for you i'm not gonna lie it does take patience it does take effort and in some cases if you do want to really really unique looking camp you may have to spend some money in the atomic shop but it is worth it trust me on that one guys with the release of steel dawn they've also introduced shelters as well now shelters opens up another avenue for building and yes they are still a little bit buggy at the moment but they will improve i'm pretty confident on that they really are a nice addition to the game even though it does require a bit of imagination to get the most use out of them the very large spaces and it is hard to fill them bethesda have also just announced that they will be having different camp loadouts which means instead of just having one camp that you have constantly got to change if you get bored of it you can have multiple different camps in different locations but i think you can only have one loaded in at a time so for example if you had a camp up at the lumber yard near vault 76 and you had another one in your slot down at the white springs you could only have one of them two active at a time which has a double function sometimes you log into a world and your camp can't be placed because somebody's there instead of server hopping you can just change to a different camp ward out very nice touch that seriously guys camp building can keep you occupied for hours and that's not an over exaggeration you get a building to your head you get it sorted out and then you can just spend hours just finally changing things and making it how you want it to be it's a really nice feature of the game and if nothing else this makes the game worth purchasing in my opinion so let's discuss pvp and to be honest with you this is something that really needs looking at it's not brilliant pvp in fallout 76 doesn't work as it would do in a normal game for example in daisy you can sit there you can hide in a bush and you can snipe at someone and you will kill them fallout 76 lacks that kind of system if you want to have a fight with somebody you've got to go to a workshop and initiate pvp by trying to capture that workshop or you've just got to attack someone and hope that they attack you back because if they don't attack you back you're not going to be doing any damage whatsoever it also has a negative effect of that if you want to hide and sneak up on somebody if they have to fight back with you you've lost the element of surprise and they can get the jump on you then there's also pacifist mode which means that if they've got pacifist mode on you can't deal any damage to them there is ways around it using a couple of glitches and whatnot but it's not a perfect system by any means if you like pvp fallout may not be the game for you trust me on that guys so what is the world of fallout 76 like in general i.e the graphics the appearance of the place it's not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination but there is some really 
beautiful locations in it. You can step up onto a cliff and have this perfect view of the forest, for example, which is a region on the map, and it's just absolutely mind-blowing. You do get issues with god rays and stuff springing out of the ground, you know, th there is little problems here and there, but it is a Bethesda game at the end of the day, let's not forget that. And the game engine is about 20 year old now, so it's not going to be a graphical masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination. But it's nice to look at. I don't see any serious issues with it at all, to be honest with you. It's definitely playable. All in all, guys, it is a pretty cool map. There's some really nice locations. There's a fair few funny Easter eggs in there. You know, there's a Breaking Bad one, for example, that I can think off top of my head. And the enemies themselves are pretty damn sweet. You've got the Blood Eagles. You've got the Raiders. You've got the Scorched. You know, there is a really nice variation. So, what's my conclusion? In all honesty, I think the game is 100% worth buying. When it first came out, it was a really, really hollow shell of a Fallout experience, but it has improved no end. And I'm not just saying that, guys. It is a totally different game now. You can't compare it to when it first came out. Sure, it does need a lot of work on the PvP system. I still think they could add some form of settlement system, faction system. There's a lot of things they could do, but a lot of the updates they've been doing recently have made a massive difference to playability, and in a positive way too. The problem is with Fallout is its reputation when it first came out overshadows every single update and improvement it's had over its lifetime. You say Fallout 76 to somebody, they instantly say it's a crap game, and that's because they've not played it since its release. Give it a chance, go out and buy it, and you may just find you really, really enjoy the game. Me, personally, I hated it when it first came out, but I stuck with it, and now I really, really do like it, and I think I've got about two and a half thousand hours into it. I hope you've enjoyed the video, I hope it's been informative. Stay safe, and have some fun. I'll catch you at next one.